Welcome back to everyone's favorite series, Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I mock it, giving you my views, thoughts, opinions. I think it's real fun looking at other people's perspectives when it comes to the NFL draft. And you know what? This puts some names on our radar that might otherwise not be. And it's fun because you get to see different opinions. It's just a great series. But what's crackalackin'? It's your boy Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead and become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's always important. I love having this discourse, especially when it comes to the draft, because we all got opinions. Today, we look at Brandon Coyle's mock draft. He put this up on Sports Illustrated, also writes for the NFL Draft Bible. I'll leave a link to this mock in the description below, and I'll also leave a link to his Twitter handle if you want to check out some of his takes. But let's go ahead. Let's dive into the nitty-gritty. I, I, uh, I assume these are Vegas betting odds. Um, so we're not going to even get into the draft order. If you got a problem with the draft order, take it up with Vegas. Take it up with how your team's currently playing. But the Detroit Lions at one. Don't know if Detroit will be one. That's a gritty team, man. They could really win any week now. They got a matchup against Chicago this week. That's very interesting. But they go Kayvon Thib uh, Thibodeau. Out of Oregon, man. Banger pick, dude. Kayvon's a monster. Dude's kind of an iron man he he played like almost every snap for oregon in 2020 uh he's been a little banged up this thus far this year but still a wonderful prospect uh let's be honest about like guys like like trey flowers you know he's more of this like multi tool this swiss army knife you can kind of place around the defense uh romeo kawara i think is more of this edge too you need that edge one and i like the idea of taking uh flowers and maybe make putting them at like a five tech so again Thibodeau, it just makes too much sense makes too much sense i don't think there's gonna be a lot of disagreement with a lot of these mock drafts uh currently with the quarterback class kind of being in turmoil if you will but let's go to the next pick being the new york jets Derek stanley come on we we, we know we know what the cornerback position currently the cornerback depth looks like for the jets derrick stanley is the pick everyone's making it makes too much sense uh derrick stanley wonderful athlete the guys really put together some good football since ucl that ucla game uh it was kind of like uh they a lot of the times where he got beat was playing in the slot he's better when he could get in the face of the opposing receivers in the slot he was playing a bit off coverage and uh, Kyle Phillips really just took advantage of that uh but Derek Stanley's wonderful dude probably most athletic uh corner in this class real quick let's talk about the sponsor of today's video underdog fantasy underdog fantasy is a wonderful place if you want to go make a little extra cash moolah baby playing some fantasy football you could do week to week best ball leagues that are worth up to 50 to hundred thousand dollars you could do player prop bets they got a lot of options and it's not just football but other sports as well when you use promo code bro Schmo, you get ten dollars added to your ten dollar deposit so once you deposit ten dollars you get another ten added to that that equals 20 so go ahead go make some money playing well, fantasy football, something I hope you're good at. But uh, it supports the channel. It helps me out. So go ahead. Help me help you help me. Back to the video. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, Evan Neal. Evan Neal's a monster, dude. He's a monster. In this tackle class, that's got a lot of questions, if, if we're being brutally honest. But Evan Neal, no question here, man. He has put up some good... Good play. We saw it at right tackle last year. We're seeing it at left tackle this year. Uh, Cam Cam Robinson, he is probably not going to be retained after the franchise tag is done. Jawan Taylor, oh, man. It's not looking good after having a really promising last like stretch to the rookie season. He went through that sophomore slump. This year, it's not been encouraging they got walker little kind of sitting in the background grab neil it makes sense he's one of the top prospects in this class houston texas though they're going quarterback and he has spencer rattler i know it's not popular right now spencer rattler ah uh, the arm talent dude the arm talent is there 
but we do know that he is very undisciplined in his play. Doesn't like to take his checkdowns. He likes to sling the ball, make those big plays. And it's cost him a lot in these games. I mean, so much so. We know what happened this past weekend, Chanton. Bench Spencer Rattler. We want Caleb, Caleb Williams being the backup. I don't know if Spencer comes out this year if things don't change. I don't know if he's on the Sooners if things don't change. There could be a transfer going on here. There's a lot of questions. Uh, Spencer Rattler, he's not my top quarterback, but I understand if he is for some people that really like the arm talent. And you know there with the Texans, don't even give me that Davis Mills. He looked good against the Panthers. He looked good in the first half. He looked very much like a rookie in the second half. He is a third-round pick. If you can get a first round, a top 10, top 15 talent at quarterback, you take it. But just don't know if he's mine. Currently, I'm more of a Malik Willis, Sam Howell, uh, Matt Corral type of guy. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, as we saw, they took uh, Kyle Hamilton. Can you imagine pairing Hamilton and stinking uh, just Bates, dude? Jesse Bates, that is... That's scary. But, uh, I mean, I'd be very tempted to go corner here as well. I don't think they have a top corner, like a number one shutdown corner on the depth chart. I mean, this could be a trade down option as well. But Hamilton, man, has been spectacular. He's easily a top 10 pick. Not going to dispute that too much. And then on to the next. Atlanta Falcons go Malik Willis. So Malik Willis, probably my top corner uh, quarterback on the board. Just the ceiling's way higher than any other prospect. Probably outside of Rattler, but Rattler needs to get that crap together. But, um, yeah, Willis, man, he's been playing great football. Uh, I know they just lost to Syracuse, but that wasn't on him. Uh, Matt Ryan hasn't looked great, to be fair. they're not. I think that offense is... It, they could be doing a bit things better, like uh, Kyle, Ham, or Kyle Pitts. I don't know. He's not just a tight end. Use him like the weapon he is. Move him around. But I like I like to pick a Willis if they really do want to look at look towards the future. Andrew Booth at corner. Like, yeah, let's be honest about these Giants, man. Their cornerback position hasn't looked nearly as strong as it did last year. With the addition of Dory Jackson, Dory Jackson just had a drop interception. That probably cost the Giants the game. Uh uh James Bradbury hasn't been his he has he wasn't he hasn't been nearly as shut down as he was the prior year. Uh Andrew Booth come in, bring him in. Um honestly, you could do a lot of different things. Just add into I I'm not I'm not opposed to adding cornerback depth. They did grab uh who was the cat at a uh Aaron Robinson. There we go. Uh, out of Central Florida. They have Aaron Robinson. Uh, I think they like what they have in Darnay Holmes uh, is what it is. Uh, Xavier McKinney is a guy they like to line up in the slot. They do have Julian Love. I feel like there, you could go other spots here. I know that the offensive line talent in this class isn't great, but I think this is what I'm a big fan of Akem uh, Ikwanu out of NC State. Big fan. I think he'd be a good addition if you want to play him a guard, maybe even right tackle. He has been impressive as a pass uh, as a uh, pass protector, actually. I didn't watch the Clemson game, but let's at least w look at what he looked like analytically. And it, it looks like he played extremely well. He played over 100 snaps in that game. Holy freaking moly. Uh, Eagles, they continue to go corner because, hey, man, top corners in this class are really good. Kair Elam. Uh, you know, with Steve, uh, Steven Nelson, he's on a one-year deal. You could use a guy opposite of Darius Slay. I know they got Zach uh, McPherson out of Texas Tech. I think he might be more of a slot, but they're not really playing him a lot anyway. They got uh, Maddox in the slot there. But, yeah, just grab uh, – making sure you're set at the cornerback position is so, so key. I mean, having good depth there is such a volatile position. As we see a team like the Giants, who we thought – what corner position squared away seeing that struggle a bit uh tampa bay after a few injuries they're really struggling in the, struggling in the secondary so get in depth there with very good players very key uh ooh, kenyan green going to the giants again i'm a bit higher on ikwanwu uh ikem i'm gonna just call him icky i'm a bit higher on icky 
And Kenny Green is coming off a really bad game against Arkansas. To be fair, he started the year at right tackle. He looked pretty good the first two games. They moved him into right guard, and I thought he maybe looked less impressive. To be fair, he never played on the right side before. He's He was mainly playing left tackle or left guard. Uh, and while it wasn't a bad game he had against, I think it was New Mexico, it wasn't a great game, and then he really struggled. He he struggled a little bit at right right guard, and then they moved him to left tackle for, I think, like 20 snaps, and uh, Trey Williams had a field day in this game for Arkansas. So I'm thinking tackle's not his position in the future, so grabbing him play guard I think is fine, but um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I don't know... If, Kenny Green will be a top 10 prospect. He really needs to rebound after that Arkansas game. And they, Texas A&M, you really need to figure out where you want to put this guy. Because thus far, he's played left tackle most recently. You put him at right guard. You start him the year at right tackle. like, And we know that he played a great season at left guard. Like, I don't know, man. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. At number 10. The Washington football team, Sam Howell. I like this. I think Sam Howell probably has the strongest arm in the class. You can make a case for uh, like a Carson Strong. Not like guys like Willis or uh, uh, Corral are, f- are much f- – not like those guys are too far apart in terms of arm strength. Uh, but Sam Howell's probably got the strongest arm. Sam Howell, a lot, he's getting a lot of crap because his teams have his team has suffered some losses at Virginia Tech. Uh, and then Georgia Tech, like, to be fair, this Georgia Tech team has, like, that defense has been very good this year. Sam Howell, no one is stepping up outside of downs as a playmaker. Like, how cannot be expected to do this on his own? You're expecting him to win games, especially when your defense isn't playing well. You're expecting this guy to win games by himself. And then you, let's just let's just say this, dude. Josh Allen playing at Wyoming had no talent around him. Was a 500 win quarterback. If you're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, granted, I will say, yeah, North Carolina, you got a much better talent surrounding him, but obviously not enough. No one's stepping up. So yeah. Uh, I'm cool with how I like this. I think he's Ron Rivera type of guy. And then we're going to Marvin Leal. Oh, uh, to the Minnesota Vikings. Can you imagine throwing him on the outside opposite of Hunter? That's so scary. A guy that could also kick inside, maybe on passing downs, or you could play him inside um exclusively. Like he brings a lot of versatility. He's a monster. This guy eats when he wants to. Wonderful hand usage. Great movement skills, very twitchy. I love I love Lil. This is a great pick for Minnesota. Carolina Panthers go Sean Ryan. Bit higher on Sean Ryan than I am, but to be fair, this tackle class is in all kinds of disarray. Uh Sean Ryan's played a very good season. He had a uh, one hiccup against LSU, but not his fault. To be fair, DTR terrible pocket presence like how are you expected to constantly win when you your quarter when you don't know where your quarterback is when he doesn't want to stick to the pocket and like he drifts so far back like if especially if you're facing these like these speed rushers like lsu they got some quick edge rushers like how are you supposed to win on the outside if your quarterback just keeps drifting back like 10 yards it's just it's not fair he had a couple of holding calls on him because well he had to. Your quarterback's drifting back. You're losing on that rep. Like, you're, you're trying to protect your quarterback. So, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. He played very good in 2020 against Kayvon Thibodeau. So, Sean Ryan, like, he could emerge in this class. He also has guard flexibility. A lot of pe- Some people think he's better guard than tackle. We'll see. Either way, both positions help the Panthers on the offensive line. Uh, Garrett Wilson, four, first wide receiver off the board, going to... The Indianapolis Colts. I'd actually rather Chris Olave there. Have him pair up with Michael Will, um, Michael Pittman. Garrett Wilson's phenomenal. I think Olave's outplayed him this year thus far, so I kind of have the edge going to Olave. But both both receivers, I think, are at the top of this class. But the Eagles, they're going Zach Harrison. I get the upside when it comes to Zach Harrison. I really do. Um, like he's a he's got the physical tools, athletic freak. Um, he needs work on his technique, man. There's not he doesn't have much more than a bull rush. He really just tries to win on upside. We saw how he struggled in the Oregon game. 
Uh, I do like this fit for the Eagles if you, if they don't plan on re-signing like a Derek Barnett. Um, Brandon Graham could be a cap casualty at some point. He is he just did get hurt too. He's out for the year. Uh, yeah, I mean, outside of I think there's better prospects like Kingsley and Agbear or Kingsley. Aneg Bari, Aneg Bari, Aneg Bari. Bam, I'm nailing. I'm getting that name down. I think he's one of my favorite prospects in this class. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, I think, could be an option here, too. I think those are two better prospects currently than Harrison. Uh, I think you can make cases for Myja Sanders, uh, Nick Benito, Adam Anderson. There's also some guys on the outside looking in that have looked very good this year. So, Zach, uh, Zach Harrison, I don't think he's a guy that's really helped his stock thus far this season. Uh, Drake Jackson, you know what? Drake Jackson's coming off a game where he finally kind of looked the part there for USC. Granted, it was against Oregon State, but I really like Joshua Gray at left tackle for Oregon State. And Jackson had a few wins on him. He had five pressures in that game, which actually doubled what he's had in the previous three. I like that. We know the high end upside of Drake Jackson. He is an athletic freak. Great movement skills. Just want to see more consistency as a pass rusher. He'll get a couple of more chances against uh, uh, Arizona State. And I believe he plays UCLA. So you got Kellen. Um, I think it's Deitch. The left tackle at Arizona State. That's Watch him out. He's rising up boards. And then um, obviously Sean ryan uh good fit though oh whoops good fit <laughs> good fit for the chargers i think putting him in a y9 uh having him play outside the tackle is kind of where you want him um let's see darion kenner uh kenyard ken kennard kennard bam oh my gosh i'm terrible with names going to the vegas i actually made the same pick in my mock draft i think he just you look at this guy he looks like a tom cable type of guy uh, whether they move Leatherwood into guard or they could put Kennard into guard. Uh, and I kind of talked about this in my mock draft. It, this pick makes a lot of sense. Let's see. Uh, New England Patriots go Traylon Burks. I actually think this would be a better spot for Garrett Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson's off the board. Traylon Burks has lit it up, man. He has come alive in the last couple of games. And now he has a big one against Georgia where he will be tested. Him and KJ Jefferson, the quarterback there. Uh, that is going to be a very spicy matchup. The Patriots, they like their big bodied slot receivers. Uh, Nikhil Harry never really developed into that for them. Burks is a guy that mainly operates out of the slot. So, yeah, I kind of like the pick here. Pittsburgh goes Carson Strong. I think I'd like Matt Corral better here with him on the board. For me, Strong, he didn't prove enough to be a first rounder. Because, like, this opening slate of games, those first three games, I think he really needed to really perform above and beyond to make a case for him to be, to be a first rounder. Because he won't get that chance uh, unless they have a bowl, a, a bowl game against a significant opponent. But um, I think I still saw some of the uncomfortableness in the pocket. At least when there was actual pressure. I do like that. I think the pocket poise is a bit better. He's not leaving the pocket when there's no pressure to be found. But you could tell under pressure he's kind of a different quarterback. Uh, I just don't don't think he's shown enough to be a first rounder. But he does got a banger arm. Uh, and it, you know what? In a quarterback class where it's up for grabs, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, Denver Broncos go Matt Corral. I love Matt Corral. This, he's got a Big statement game this week, though, against Alabama. We'll see what happens there. It's going to be a very interesting one. We're going to be watching that. We're going to be doing a live stream watch along this Saturday for Bama versus Ole Miss. So join us for that. Uh, Denver going quarterback, though. Yeah, Teddy's a bridge quarterback. Teddy is a bridge quarterback. I know he's playing well, but he hasn't he hasn't seen real competition. He's going to see real competition this week against uh, Baltimore. The New Orleans Saints go George. Pickens, I would, I, I'm telling you, I go Chris Olave in a heartbeat here. Here he's still on the board. He's currently probably going to be my top receiver as of right now. The dude's a burner. I think the Saints really need a burner desperately. George Pickens is great, but he's going to miss, for all intents and purposes, this whole season. 
he's gonna have uh have to like make up some of that at the combine but yeah i think i i'm taking i'm taking chris Olave here man he's got the burners i think he he's exactly what they need while george pickens is more of this uh contested catch uh great body control type of guy so yeah uh tennessee Titans go trevor pennant Ooh, so i'm gonna be front with y'all the only game that i've really been able to find tape on has been the iowa state game this year that's been the only game and guess what he looked good he shut down uh will mcdonald Ah, I beg the question here because he has better analytics than Spencer Brown, who ended up going, I think, in the second or third round. I can't remember. Day two. But in th this is a class where the tackle class, I said, gets real murky. There's prospects here and there that could make it, could be. But, ah. Uh, I mean, then my question is with Dylan Radins, what do you see him as? Taylor Lewan, I know he had a bad game against Chandler Jones, but Chandler Jones is that type of edge rusher. He makes a lot of really good tackles look look bad. But I mean, I guess I mean the running the running game is such a huge part to this offense. You do want to make sure the line is is legit. Uh, Cowboys go George Karloftis. Karloftis. Uh, he's having a banger year. He's looking a lot like he did his freshman season. Um, they don't really have like oh, Randy Gregory, I guess. I, he's a free agent after this season. They don't really have a true pass rusher on the opposite side of Lawrence. They could go corner here. Trent McDuffie's still on the board. I might take Trent McDuffie. Uh, I think the safety play has been really good for Dallas, but um. I don't. I don't dispute this pick. Uh, is there anyone else? I, Kingsley and Nagbar, I think, might be an option here. Because I mean, he's George Karloftis with, I think, more physicality, which is saying a lot. Karloftis is a man that likes to move, move guys against his will. But I think um, Kingsley, Anagbari, Anagbari, bam, uh, is a guy that's just his physical upside's huge. He is. He's so violent. So, I don't know. I think I might take him there. Trent McDuffie going to the Cardinals. Only problem I got with this is, hey, not a good scheme fit. But then again, I thought the same thing about Byron Jones. Byron Jones. Byron Murphy. And Murphy's kind of, after three seasons, finally adapted to being... He's playing very good for the Cardinals. Trent McDuffie, I would say, is a better prospect. Maybe a guy you could start right away. So, yeah. Uh, again, I question the scheme fit, but... Scheme fit apparently didn't matter a lot with Byron, Byron Murphy. So, uh, Adam Anderson going to the Jets. I like this. this is kind of like, uh, I guess, a D Ford type of pick. Have a guy that just flies off the edge opposite of Carl Lawson. Um, I mean, the Jets are going to have two picks. Who was their first? Derek Stanley. So, yeah, I can see them going defense heavy, though. The offense has looked pretty bad. And then we got, all right, Kingsley and Egbari, dude, going to the Packers. I like this a lot. Gives you a lot of versatility. If Zadarius Smith, if Preston Smith, if either of those guys or both those guys are gone, getting someone opposite of Rashawn Gary is kind of, kind of key, kind of important. He's also a guy that could come in and kind of fill in that Zadarius Smith role and play like five tech, play along the line. So... Yeah, I like this pick a lot, especially since I'm really high on him. Did Aiden Hutchinson go yet? Oh, he hasn't. Interesting. People are typically pretty high on Hutchinson. Uh, well, I flew by a few picks. Oh, actually, the next picks is Aiden Hutchinson. Just uh, you get another power rusher across from uh, Miles Garrett. Uh, Clowney, he's a free agent at the end of the year. Uh, Hutchinson is a guy you could kick inside occasionally too. Uh, Daniel Falele, um, or Falai, I, I think it's Falele. Yeah, you could put him at right tackle. I don't think he, he doesn't have that killer instinct that really fits the Ravens run game. Uh, again, this is a spot I would really like Icky 
from NC State. I'd rather him here. I don't know if Falele, I think he's more of a day two pick. I don't know if he could really sneak into day one at this point. Um, he really feels like, he just feels like the same guy we saw in 2019. Chris Olave, this is a banger pick. I mean, if you think about this, getting him across from Diggs, he's still got Beasley, but get, they really like Gabriel Davis as well. This feels like more of a luxury pick. But Olave, if he's available here, I'd be tempted not to. I'd be tempted to take him as well. And then Tyler Linderbaum. Yeah, I get it. The Dolphins are interior. Like our offensive line is kind of a mess. Linderbaum's great. He, for me, is a top 15 prospect. But I get it. Interior prospects, they typically don't go that high. He's been a monster this year. Might be the best interior prospect in this class. But yeah, man. Uh, I guess he would. He's a guy you could play a guard as well. Like, if you like Mike uh, Michael Dieter there at center. Uh, Mod Gardner going to Detroit, man. The rich just get richer. Because uh, they do have Akuda. To be fair, they have no idea what they have in Akuda. Just because, you know, oh, he's been hurt. Uh, he's out for the rest of this season. Um, even Ifedi um, Malifonwu. He, I think he got beat up this past, like he just got the start last week. He now he's hurt for a couple of weeks. Um, they have Ayuari, but he's young. He's more of a. I feel like he's better depth. This is an interesting pick. I do like Gardner, and you know what? I'm not going to oppose cornerback depth. Uh, Jalen Catalan, all right, straight up, dude, straight up, get Sorsen out of there. I know he's a great locker room guy. He's not that good of a player in safety at safety. Like, if you're taking away snaps from Julian Thornhill, who I'd argue is probably your best safety there, because let's be be fair, the Honey Badger he kind of serves as this box uh, slot. This guy you move around the whole um, the whole defense. Uh, I like the idea of bringing Catalan. They, they, this Chiefs team, they prefer to have three safeties on the field. Catalan's amazing. I love Catalan. He kind of talks about him as a potential replacement for the Honey Badger. I don't think you need to replace the Honey Badger. I think you could bring him in as a replacement for Sorsen. Catalan's my second, probably going to be my second safety. Um, him and Jordan Battle are really going to be fighting for that spot. I like both those guys a ton. Catalan, he's really turned into a good tackler. He because in 2020 he was more of a like more of a hey I'm gonna try to make the big hit while they're not looking aim low now he actually he's wrapping guys up so yeah I think that this needs to be a defensive draft for the Chiefs man their defense is terrible uh then Mikhail Wright going to Tampa Bay yes we know the woes with Tampa Bay when it comes to secondary right now a lot of that's injury right he had a really bad game against Ohio State uh if this if they make the playoffs Oregon I think they have a good path to where they make the playoffs because the ACC seems like they're out of it so I think Oregon could make the playoffs and because Wright really needs a second chance to prove he can guard the best uh best receivers in this class because I think he kind of failed with that against Olave and Wilson. Uh, I don't know if there's a real cornerback six here that's worth a first rounder right now. It's it's interesting. But yeah, Wright really needs a bounce back. But that's it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.